fight one of them, you fight all of them. Hey. Cracking G, it's your boy Cooper. You already know my channel about love, life, and loyalty. And I got a little information piece, a little informative piece for y'all today. So I hope y'all enjoy it. Like, comment, subscribe. Listen to me real quick. Franco, I love you, always have loved you from day one, dog. You know this. When we go back to the comedy club, nice to get you on shows. And when the situation happened with that woman, I didn't know that was your girl, and you was. Let me finish. Let me finish. Hey, man, I don't let care me, about that. Just, I never asked you I'm about gonna, that I'm going to finish listen, talking, homie, and listen, I'm going to let you listen, talk. Listen. That's, that's how we're going to do this. So we have, have this situation Follow. about this girl, and, you, and, and what you did was, fam, you rolled up behind me with a pipe and hit me in the head with a pipe. You didn't fight me no, head up, no, Pancho. I don't, got the picture. Man. Listen, listen. Pancho, I, I got the I got this. This I, you did I'm not fight not. me head up, my nigga. Man, who would have thought that Charleston White would have sparked some real, real beef? Like this, this beef ain't no, ain't no joke. This, it's gonna go up. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna say they gonna get to the, you know what I'm saying? The pistol play, gun play. I don't think that. But these two old heads is gonna, they gonna leak. It's gonna be that because now you got. TK Kirkland, which I know a lot of y'all might not know who he is. You have to be familiar with him being a comedian or him being on Vlad and stuff. So I know a lot of y'all don't know TK Kirkland. He the homie that was at the uh that was saying, like, you didn't fight me square, Scruncho. He's like, you didn't fight me square. That's TK Kirkland. TK Kirkland was always known as a smooth homie, but he gangster, or whatever. Like he be saying he gangster, you know what I'm saying? I don't I don't know if he truly gangster. I'm just saying what he speaks on. You know what I mean? He got into a fight, I guess, back in the day with Scruncho. Now, Scruncho at the bottom, I know a lot of y'all don't know who he is because a lot of y'all haven't seen How High. But for those of y'all that's watching right now that seen How High with Method Man and Red Man, Scruncho was the guy that was the uh, the pimp apprentice to Mike Epps on there. The one that was like, he was like, here. He's like, give me the baby powder. And Scruncho hand Mike Epps the baby powder in his hand. That was Scruncho. Scruncho is a real crip from LA and whatever. You know what I mean? He a real, real gangster homie or whatever. But anyway, long story short, he came on 5150, Corey Holcomb show. You know what I'm saying? Well, Corey Holcomb from the Robert Taylor homes. You know what I'm saying? One of my Chicago OGs. Because that's what he is. He a big homie. He a big homie from the crib. So one of the OGs from the crib. You know what I mean? He, they get on there. He tight with Scruncho. And he don't mess with TK Kirkland like that. And you got Scruncho saying this. The first time, he tried to, I knocked him out because I asked him, I tried, I like TK. I looked up to him, I, I, you know, he's slick. But I just went out, I said, TK, why would you throw me under the bus? And all he had, us to me throwing you an alley hoop. All you had to say is, oh man, you know what? I didn't even know that was your man. So, Eddie, you know how you talk. Yeah. But the nigga hit me with, you really on your feelings. I said, what? I said, oh, this nigga really think I'm a sucker. So I said, I tell you what, homie says, she want to throw me under the bus and I want to take accountability. When you see me, nigga, I'm going to knock your motherfucking noodles off. So when you see me, even duck, run, pray, fight. But Man, look, that was just a little short clip of it. You know what I'm saying? Like 5150, they usually record for about two hours, two and a half hours. But anyway, so, you know, Scruncho get to describing it. Now he goes a little more in depth. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like he, he breaking it down like, bro, you telling everybody I snuck up on you and hit you with a pipe, you know what I'm saying? Just like that last clip I showed you at the beginning on the intro, that was them talking after the uh, podcast on Tuesday. And you all heard TK say, you know, you snuck up, hit me with a pipe. I got the pictures of it. Woo, woo, woo. You know what I mean? All that. So now, bro gonna keep going into it. Like, you talking about I hit you with a pipe, man. You know that ain't happening. You know that's not what really happened, bro. I, I gave you a fair one and I knocked you out. We hit him with... And when I hit the nigga, the nigga got a glass jaw. The nigga's a sucker, man. I hit that nigga, I hit him one punch. You know what I'm saying? Squad Joe, but you got when a I fat hit, ass fish, when I, nigga. When I, when I hit the nigga, the nigga was already knocked out before he hit the ground. Go on shit, and Marcus, and come ground, sit down. His Marcus. head fell backwards and his head bounced off the pavement, yeah. almost killed him. He was foaming from the mouth and oh, bleeding in the back of his head. Now, if I was a really a dog nigga and I was really trying to you do something to that nigga, I'd have stomped him out, but I wasn't, it wasn't a, it wasn't a revenge or angry, it was a respect thing. 
I felt, I, I had so much you love. You like the nigga to see who you was, Look, nigga. No, yeah, I had so much love for the nigga. I swear to God, I almost helped the nigga. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's what happened I with Scope Bubble. I almost gave the nigga CPR, nigga. I said, this nigga. <laughs> R.I.P. Scope Bubble. I, <laughs> Scope Bubble got robbed, and he had his gout. When the nigga laid him down and went through his pocket, he saw the gout. And the nigga's like, come on, G, let me help you up. That's oh, that gal shit. He <laughs> robbed him and he helped him up. He robbed him and he helped him up. Hey, you know what? The, the ironic thing that you say, guess who told me TK was a hoe? It was it was a skull bubba. He says TK went in there, you know, got beat up or something, and nigga came in the bar at the police and snitched on everybody. All right, now this is where this is where shit get good, bro. This way it get good. He gonna, you know what I'm saying? You know how when you read a story, it tell you, you know, you got the plot, you know, you got the rising, uh, like rising topic, something like that, then the climax, then the resolution, and all that stuff, right? We at that part was about to be at the climax because he do the scrunch do get funny as hell because he actually talk about how TK put them peoples on him, like you profess to be a gangster. You always talk about that shit when you interviewing with Vlad and everybody. You talk about how player you is, how gangster you is, how real men move and shit. And here you is snitching on a homie. That knocked your ass out. Like you, you put them peoples on him. The day I got arrested, right? They kicked in my door, knocked in my door, came. My little, me and my little daughter. My daughter answered the door. She said, Dad, it's a bunch of police in the living room. I come in the room. They like, we are going for your arrest. I'm like, TK file charges. So, they embarrassed me in front of my daughter off a post of a real nigga fight, right? I go to the police car and I swear to God, I'm not making this up, man. <laughs> Wait, it's funny. Listen, a <laughs> snitch sit in back of the car, police car. An informant sit in the front. TK was sitting so close, he needed slid to the left, he'd have been driving. <laughs> <laughs> he showed up with the police to take me to jail, man. And I asked, I said, man, and guess what? I swear to God, I put this on my kids, homie. When I knocked that nigga out, I, I, all kind of anonymous callers called me and thanked me. Two niggas paid for, I don't even know who they was. They paid for my attorney fees. They bailed me out of jail. It was about, man, I swear, I got over 50 calls thanking me because everybody was scared of him. He's a bully. That's why what he did to Charleston White, you know what I'm saying? That was wrong, homie. You don't let no nigga do no nine shows. Hold on, we got a Mississippi for. lawyer finna sit down. <laughs> sit your garbage <laughs> ass. Sit your garbage ass <laughs> down, yeah, Marcus. Just, everybody, Marcus, what, everybody no, think we, Marcus, everybody right? think we beefing. You know that. Uh, don't address oh, that shit. Know they gonna break up all this stuff. What's up, baby? Right. What up? No, hey, Scratcho, yeah. I'm glad you getting this off because yeah. you, I'm sure it make you feel better to get it off. I, did, yeah. I didn't know. I, I mean, like, it, it is what it is. Man, I, I knocked that I nigga out twice. Out. I knocked the nigga out when I first knocked him out, right? And then <laughs> the second time I knocked him out is because I got out of jail that day. And when I got out of jail that day, most snitches will run different states and get disappeared. This nigga act like I wasn't gonna get out of jail. So he when he was at performing at the comedy store the night I got out. Mm -hmm. So when he, when he when I got out, I thought that was more insulting. But I knew whatever I had to do, I had to hurry up and do it again because if once he go to court, the judge gonna put a uh 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 what well, we well, I, we know how it goes. Training order, right? So uh, so I had to get him again. So I went to the comedy store, hopped on the stage with the paperwork, and read my ass about that, out. Nigga. Read that out again, right? This nigga pressed charges on me and then went to the, went to the, and man, I'm telling you, it was a, you would think it was an OJ trial. Nigga, when I went to court, man, he a, he wouldn't have stood a chance coming to court. Nigga was a thousand real niggas in every court date. Nigga, ah, niggas I didn't even know. I didn't know if they was there for me or TK, but they was all there for me. Nigga, they thought I was OJ because he's a whole nigga. He disrespectful and Charles said white. Man, that little dude, I was, and I ain't saying this because, cause I like, I think I ain't gonna never take away his talent. The nigga gifted as a motherfucker. You know what I mean? Who that? TK. And you gonna, see, I give him his yeah, problems, I'm a, I'm a, man. Yeah, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna, I, didn't, I, 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 ain't gonna I, mix. I know what you coming on yeah, the show. Mix, you got to tell your yeah, story. Yeah, I ain't gonna mix facts with reality. He, the right. nigga gifted, the nigga funny. But I went to the show in Vegas, you know what I'm saying? Cause my wife loved Charleston White, you know what I'm saying? Cause he, Charleston, he say what people can't say. That's why you my favorite comedian. That's why Charleston my favorite comedian. Y'all saying shit I can't even say. You know what I'm saying? Fuck politically correct. You niggas are just correct. You know what I mean? So y'all see what he talking about? Now nah, I gotta, you know what I'm saying? I can't just, I just can't just let this video go without giving y'all, you know what I'm saying? All the facts, man. Especially y'all that been supporting me. But anyway, so he talking about Charleston White. This whole thing 
sparked off the Charleston White situation where Live Nation didn't pay him. That man did nine, ten shows. They did a bunch of cities, different cities. And Charleston did not get paid. See, the crazy thing is, if this was back in the day, like the 90s or the early thousands, it makes sense. Like, bro, you know what I'm saying? Live Nation got to pay you. They might not pay you. They might pay you in peanuts, you know what I'm saying? But it's different where everybody know Charleston. He's a leader in, you know what I'm saying, Fort Worth. Fort Worth mess with him like that. Dallas mess with the whole Texas low-key rocking with him, you know what I mean? Then you got all the mothers in Chicago. They rocking with him, you know what I mean? Then you got the court systems rocking with him because he's trying to reform the juveniles to get juvenile life. He fighting for TK right now. I did not know TK was in Tarrant County. I moved to Texas about two years ago now. I know where that Tarrant County jail at. I've been over there. I had to go down there and check in when I had first, you know what I'm saying? Got put on paperwork back home. You know what I mean? I had to come out here and check in to get put on file for Texas. So anyway, that boy TK, he fighting to try to get that boy out. Like, man, look, if he do 20 years, man, y'all need to let that boy come home. Come on now. Y'all finna get y'all gave him a life sentence and he was 17. You know what I'm saying? Really in the streets. But anyway, there's no here, no there. I'm basically getting that. He did Charles White right dirty. And then TK had the nerve to say when he did a video about it, he was like, I do not pay comedians. I don't pay, you know what I'm saying? The people that do the shows. Live Nation gonna come with the check. They sent him a check. It bounced back because he gave the wrong address. Charleston came on that and showed TK was lying. And that's where we at now. But nah, man, I gotta show y'all a little bit of what, you know, what happened with Charleston though. Nigga, I done done five shows, three days, one city and didn't get a penny. I booked my own flight, own hotel. I ain't get a penny. They said, oh man, we gonna mail you a check, 1099. You do, you do your 1099? I said, boy, start paying attention. Start paying attention. I said, okay, I'm gonna do my 1099. I did my 1099. Uh, I wanna say TK Kirkland cashed out me 250 that Monday for five shows. Well, back in my comedy day, we didn't make hardly nothing. I'm saying to myself, nigga, I sell out 10000 I do $8,000 interviews. But I'm going to go along because I like playing dumb so I can learn, so I can be smart one day. So I don't mind playing dumb. Uh, so I do the five shows. The woman slide me a number. T.K. Kirkland try to make it seem like, uh, like uh, what well, he said, something like, well, he ain't good enough to do a, a, a whole a headline. I'm saying, man, I done headline 20 some show. What he? But I just let him talk. You know, I don't want to steal his thunder. So we go to another one. So we go to Las Vegas. Uh, Las Vegas probably one of my best shows. Mayweather family and them came out there. Mayweather father. Uh, nigga, I killed the crowd. Nigga, I killed the crowd, homie. Uh, after Las Vegas, they said, hey. Oh, uh, we need another 1099. We ain't got to say, we go, we go mail you the check. TK Kirk say, hey, man, you know how we do it. I'm going to make sure you get your money. I ain't get that check. We go to San Diego. So I'm on the West Coast, nigga. So uh, I'm staying at the Venetian. So I, and I got to pay my security because I'm on the West Coast. They wouldn't let me sell my merch. So part of the agreement that I took this tour is I can sell my merch. Live Nation wouldn't let me sell my merch, homie. So they let me sell it at one show, they wouldn't let me sell it at the next show. So they stopped me from selling my merch. So we go to San Diego. Nigga, I done had to go through LA. Nigga, I'm in Cali. Kill it there. I see everybody get paid except me. Oh, oh, her, oh, here go yours right here. I open that motherfucker up, it's $750. I said, okay. Nigga, just keep going. You get Lion Nation on your resume. Just, let, just keep taking the fucking, nigga. This is how you learn. You can't get in if you don't take the fucking. They making you take it. And you, and you, how else you go get in? So, so I give them a 750 check from San Diego. Uh, what was the next stop? Houston? No, Miami. So we go to Miami and perform at the Fountain Blue. Uh, I get one of them high-ass dollar hotels, boy, over by the University of Miami. A bad motherfucker, but boy, that motherfucker was expensive. And it was out the way. So, nigga, I'm spending a lot of money to maintain this Live Nation tour. Uh, you know, but I'm, I'm picking up interviews here and there. So, uh, we do there. 
I don't think I do good that night because I use my props. Shit, he come back himself and tell me the Live Nation executive people was in the audience and they loved you, man. I used my props that night, homie. I thought that was one of my worst shows. He said they loved me. So we, we traveled to Houston the next morning. Uh, everybody know my issues in Houston. We performing at the same uh, comedy zone in the same building that, that, that the Migo kid got killed in. I don't know this. Uh, I ain't got no security. When I get ready to go, my weapons is my security, even though they my props. They tell me I can't bring my weapons in. I said, man, these are my props, homie. So they tripping with me hard. I done Ubered up here. So now I'm standing out in front of the venue, nigga. People seeing me, coming up to me, taking pictures, trying to get me to sign autograph. Nigga, I'm being bombarded. So I hit my nigga, say, man, where y'all at? I mean, we out front, check, 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 checking out everything. Man, where y'all parked at? They won't let me bring my props in. Huh? They tripping like that? Yeah. So, homie, I had a, 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 a lighter gun for my J. Morant joke. The same lighter. They wouldn't even let me bring that in, homie. They were tripping like that. So, what I started noticing was they, they, start, they stopped letting my people come backstage. They started saying my cameraman can't come backstage. Man, this whole situation, bro. Nasty work, man. TK Kirk been getting exposed. It is crazy because this year, I, okay, you know what? I could be wrong. You know what I'm saying? I could be wrong. I'm not saying this is facts. I'm just saying from what I noticed. This year, they everybody been getting exposed. No, but bro, this year nobody ain't been safe. Nobody been safe. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers even tried to uh cancel Neo. You know what I'm saying? Everybody likes Neo. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, bro, this, this some nasty work, and I I know after all this is going on this week, something gonna happen. But I know Charles and White is well calculated, so I know everything he doing is for a reason. You know what I'm saying? He's making some some stuff happen behind the scene where this ain't gonna go unanswered. And I'm not saying no street way. I'm talking about like he put that man out there being dirty. Now you got another homie from L that's from LA, like, yeah, dude, dirty. You know what I'm saying? And now, you know what I'm saying? It's like TK Kirkland got a new face. You know what I'm saying? Cause back when I was watching TK Kirk a few years back, he would seem like a dude that you would love to meet and would love to give some of his life experience that can help you on life. Now I'm looking at him like, bro, you just grimy everybody else in the industry, which that's the industry. You can't, you can't never think the industry going to care about you. It's just, it's just sad when you see your own people, you see your own people, especially when it professes to be our people, not just be black, but to be a, I'm a stand up dude. You know what I'm saying? When you, when real niggas meet stand up dudes, they respect them. You know what I'm saying? Cause you be like, man, you stand on principles, you stand on business. That's a real man. But when that person comes around, this dude been starting stuff, like throwing rocks and hanging in his hand. That's an uneasy feeling, bro. You know what I mean? But anyway, y'all, man. Appreciate y'all. For those of y'all that came through, hung out with me for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Checked in with the boy. You know what I'm saying? With your guy right here, man. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate the love. But man, it's your boy Cooper, man. My child about love, life, and loyalty. And some of my homies say knowledge wisdom understand it. I'll catch y'all on the next one.